the ridge mount yeah most people know we've already got the roller titan on our prados the mounting system is that lrs 034 i think it is something like that lrs 34 something along those lines we've had the lapx 008 which is the six points direct the 008s that here and those other two where the rails go on the prado six points direct to the roof look it was probably one of the stronger options but I didn't like it as much. Uh, I've got this set up on the 120 Prado. So for this 150, I decided to put rails on the GX and use that same mounting system. And it works quite well. You'll see some videos on one or probably our adventure channel. It's probably a roller playlist, I'd imagine. And uh, I've been standing up there. It's obviously quite strong, a lot stronger than what you need. But what I'm about to do, I've started by removing, removing the uh, shovel, the awning, uh, pretty straightforward to unbolt this and lift the uh, platform off, the Roller Titan platform. So we'll get that off, and I've already sort of mainly unpacked this to see what's included in the kit. You can see your two ridge mounts, that's the important part. Um, there's six mounting plates, a bag of nuts and bolts, so it looks pretty straightforward by that. There's three spacer plates, which I probably won't need because I don't actually know what their purpose is and what they're going to do, but I've installed them on the tray already from the previous mounting kit or the tray, whatever the case may be. And I might even, no, I'm not, I, I was gonna say, I might even just throw the extras in there, extra strength, whatever, they're pretty light, but I'd have to pull the end off the tray to do that. So I'm not going to do that. As long as I don't have to do that to install this, I don't think so. I'd imagine it's a matter of uh, removing the rails, which is remove the caps and there's two bolts. And that's where these will bolt on, two, four, six each side. This will be the strongest mounting system and the mounting that says 300 kilos i think but you know what uh it'll probably take even more than that but it's a matter of keep it light on your roof so regardless of how strong you think you might need i'm not recommending high weights on the roof but like usual we'll dissect the instructions and uh, we'll put a video together for you so stay tuned go and get your beverage and i'll do some homework and let's get on with it look i zipped through instructions pretty quick so i could get it wrong so stay tuned for a laugh but just here they show you um, they're showing the ridge mount, they're showing which nuts and bolts are going to be used to the roof at the bottom. But then in this diagram, they're showing you installing the little mounting brackets onto there. And it says, assemble hardware to the ridge mount as shown. So I guess it means that. So I don't know why they've got that diagram. That's why you listen to me, not the instructions, right? The first thing you really do, it's pretty easy to work out uh, which side's which. The closer together mounting is obviously the back of the vehicle because the rear uh, the middle and the rear mounts are closer together than the front ones, so you can lay them out. It's pretty obvious to work out that this side here is what goes on the roof like that. That's what's going to be mounted straight onto the roof. They've got access holes through there to get to your allen keys, whatever. And these plates, I've just got them sitting loose at the moment. You just use the flat washers and the nylock nuts. So we're going to get those sitting nice and square and nip those up for now. I'm not sure whether I should fully tighten them up, but I'm going to do that. I'll let you know later in the video if I shouldn't have done so that. This is basically what they should look like once you've nipped them up, okay? Now, I didn't use a square. I just did a visual square, you know, around about. It's not furniture, it's a roof rack. As long as they're straight enough, I'm sure it's uh, not going to matter too much because there's all this uh, adjustability in them. If, it's, if it does matter, we'll loosen them off later and make those little tweak adjustments. We'll get the... Uh, 90 degrees square out but i don't think we need to do that okay next step is we need to actually clear the roof so i'm going to go and take all the rails off the roof so you just remove the plastic caps there's three plastic caps front rear and middle and that'll expose the bolts take the front and the rear off lift the rail off and then any mounts and give it all give it all a good clean up and get some sealant ready because you're going to need to seal those bolt threads we never want any water going down there it gets into the roof it can cause problems with your electronics really important message here they must be sealed really well. So I just lifted off the tray and I uh, just thought it was a good opportunity to show everyone the LRS34, how that works, right? So it's basically, these are your low mounts. This is obviously what bolts, it's all adjustable, what bolts to the uh, roof rack and your bracket goes underneath and it basically just clamps on the rail there, um, front and rear. So only four mounting points, which does the job because that's a lot stronger than the weight you should be putting on your roof anyway. But anyway, I'll get these out of the way and get the rails off. And the hardest part's probably getting these covers off, and it's not that hard, but we remove them without any tools. Now, they're sort of hooking at the front. See those clips there at that end there? So that's the part you want to get off last. What holds it in at the back here? See those little clips? So that, that, there's two clips inside and out that hook in under there, under there, under there, and under there. 
So what I do is basically, I just manhandle it kind of thing. What I want to do is pretty much, I push down on the top and just get it to pop out so I get the outside, once the outside's unhooked, then I sort of push it in. It makes a bit of a noise like it's broken, but it's just these ones at this side on the inside popping out. So they're a little bit fiddly, but you know, I can't hold the camera and show you, but you get the picture, don't you? At least you know that, you know, it hooks into there. So don't try and get that end off first. It's, you want to unhook these clips here. You could probably use a, you know, trim tool, whatever you wanted to do, but it's basically pull it out, out that way. Cause the clips hook under there and there. So you want to pull it out that way. And once you do that, you can push it this way, which gets this side off and, you know, it just slides back. You can see those, the middle ones come off really easy. The front one's very similar. We've got one side down, we'll go do the other side now. Anyway, so now that we've got these off, there's rubber underneath, sort of helps seal it all up, but don't rely on it because dirt and water does get underneath it. It's quite simple, they look like 12 mils to me. We're gonna zip those out. Uh, the one in the middle, you just take that bolt out and once it's off, you can remove that last bracket. Too much information to share. So we've got the rails off and if you've been on some outback trips and you clean your car properly, it'll probably be sort of something like this. You know, this sort of look, if you don't, it'll be even full with even more dirt. Now, the procedure is compressed air, blow out any loose debris now, and then get one of my favorite, you know, those yellow Kirkland cloths from Costco that you get the, what is it? A, I've forgotten, 36 pack for about $20. Absolute bargain and they last forever. You'll buy one pack, it's gonna last you forever. Everyone's going to L, uh, Costco now. And I say Aldi by accident, that's wrong. There's something special about these ones. Anyway, then you get one of them, you give it a good wet up, you wring it out and you come and clean all this. And then you go wring it out and you go and do all your six areas once again. We want it nice and clean and it's a good opportunity to clean your whole roof. So some people, I wouldn't say go wash your car because you, you don't want to get water in there. You can't take this out in the weather now. Water cannot go down those holes. Copy? Capish? Reasonably clean, right? Reasonably, you can spend more time if you want, but that's reasonably clean. The, uh, we're going to use, look, to be honest, last time I think we used the RTV because we love the stuff. And you can see with the genuine rubbers and rails, it just pushes it out of the way because it's going to seal under there and it's also sealed in the threads. It's just beautiful. And we'll do the same thing this time. We'll put some on the bolts with the threads and we'll use it around here as well because it's not too much there. You can see and then it doesn't cause issues. It just does its job. Most of it in this case just pushed out of the way anyway. At this point, and no, no that's not on the paintwork. Not that I'm too fussed anyway, but that's what you use this uh, roller ridge mount packaging for. You put it in the middle of your roof so you can sit the ridge mount here, right? That's all locked up. We locked those up earlier and you can see where the bolts are going to go. But before you do, we're just going to sit that down gently over this side. This is what I'm going to do because it's imperative that water doesn't get down the notes. So I'm going to, I'm going to put sealant on the bolt threads. I'm not, I'm not too fussed what you use, right? You can follow the instructions, use whatever they say. You can use roof and gutter seal, you can use RTV, you can use whatever you want. As long as it's going to seal those threads. I'm also going to put some at the bottom here. There's rubber washers I'm going to put on top around those, right? And then it's going to sit on top of the rubber washers. And there will be a bolt, a washer and a spring washer that goes on the top. They're the 25 mil long ones. There should be 12 of those. And what we're going to do is mount this and it's going to sit like that, and then we can bring our tray along and use the remaining, uh, should be 12 volts, yeah. And uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Bolt that up and Bob's your uncle, job done. Now I've got to tell you the truth here, don't I, right? Yeah, it's looking good. It's rock solid even, it's all bolted up now, but I thought there was access holes for these Allen keys, right? Look at the top. I've got a hole there for the Allen key. You can see it down there, but because of the angle it's on, you can't even get your Allen key, you know, your angled Allen key in there. And then you go, we'll just use a standard Allen key. Well, a standard Allen key, because of the angle away with the roof and the angle inwards from the mount, you can see the corner of the Allen key there. So lucky for me, I've got a modified Allen key. Remember the six mil for the top of the Dobinson shocks? Well, that came in handy, so I started off, and that's, you know, I'm getting scratching here, which I'm not fussed about, you're not going to see, but I don't want to take the coating off, because then later on it's going to rust, you know what I mean? So, very... Right, so, and look, they're all the same. The middle ones, they've got these 
poles on an angle. So you need a special angle Allen key like what we've got, but it still doesn't, you know, there's just not enough, you know, you can see the holes there, but the angle's too much. And the Allen key gets stuck in and you can see the same problem scratching on the inside there. So I'm gonna be completely honest here. I don't know if this is Mark One or whatever, this is a fairly new product, but I'm gonna be providing the feedback to uh, Roller and obviously for you guys, because some people may have it already, it might not, but you can see, you can almost go in straight with an Allen key. See the rub mark there? So all they have to do is cut a little bit more out of there. I know it'll mess up the square, but it's uh, to make it easier for fitting. Then you can put an Allen key straight down, you know, by taking that corner out here. You need to have a hole in this. You need to have a slot in the side here or move these slots back or something, do something so that you can actually, you know, so it's perfectly doable but it is actually quite difficult at the moment. You need to cut down Allen key. So that's not really standard tools or a standard fit up. Anyway, that pretty well wraps up this afternoon, this evening's entertainment. As you can see, that was uh, three cans worth so far. I think I prefer the soda and lime. Either way, they're both zero sugar. And um, yeah, we're gonna uh, look at, I'm calling it a night. So we've got one side on. We'll put the other side on tomorrow in the morning, whatever, and then we'll finish off the video. So we'll call it part two. This is part one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, turn the bell on if you want to see part two. It will be coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.